You put your snares board in, you put your snares board out, you put your snares board in, and you shake it all about. Well, what are we doing this morning? Nice early Saturday morning. Shouldn't be watching cartoons downstairs. No, no, instead I've decided to uh, pick up a Super Famicom. And in hindsight, I probably should have taken it apart before I started the video rolling, but that's fine. Uh, while we're waiting, we'll get the soldering iron heated up. I'll go wet my little sponge here, which means I'll have to come back. So I'll be right back. Did you even notice I was gone? Okay, so we have uh, here one Super Famicom, which uh, is much like a, a um, Super Nintendo on the inside. Oh, the screws are missing, excellent. Okay, so usually there's four, sorry, six screws on the base, which are of um, game bit, larger game bit. So with that removed, well, halfway there. That, that was easy. So what we're actually doing, I probably should explain that, that's kind of an important thing. One thing we're doing is we're using up all these little bits of solder I keep finding everywhere. Little strands from the past. These days I've got a holder that actually holds. Look, it holds two things of solder. It's magnificent. But no, that's, that's I can't use that yet. I've got to finish up using this other stuff first. So, what have we got? Well, Right here is a replacement board that I got, or actually rather it's the original board uh, that came out of this unit. The problem was is that this one didn't work, <laughs> which, you know, it's a bit of a showstopper. So I tried replacing the uh, little uh, voltage regulator, the fuse, no, not either of those. So it's something else. So this board is it's sort of a spare parts board for the moment. So what I'm actually getting off here is this back back part, which I, someone mentioned in the comments on another video, asking if it was removable. And it, it does look like it is. Uh, what's holding it on is a screw and a couple of clips on the AV port, plus solder on the uh, DC, DC in. Now, it's worth noting at this point that the... Uh, the width on the DC import of the Super Famicom, the inner pin is actually a bit thinner? Thicker. I think it's thicker. I think it's 2.5 versus 2.1 millimeter on the internal. So you can actually measure that if you have some uh, calipers, which I do somewhere, and I will put these values up on the website, mercretro.net. So that's something to look forward to as well. But, yeah, the, the main reason for wanting to replace this is not because of a uh, fault of the port or any of the ports at the back. It's just that they're absolutely disgusting on this main board. I mean, look at that. That is... <laughs> I'm scared to think what the original uh, Famicom was that that board came out of. It would have been, uh, well, yellowing is usually associated with either sunlight degra degradation or even just contact with the air. Or even better, cigarette smoke from a developer. Because I noticed that a lot of development units tend to go, well, yellow. Hey, there's my hands in the picture now. Now I can gesticulate. Oh, an oscilloscope. I can also oscilloscope elope. I still don't know how to use that thing. So anyway, Super Famicom. You got the uh, cartridge eject mechanism. Just try and remember how it goes together with this spring on the side. Otherwise you'll be in a bit of trouble. Disconnect your uh, little front board, which is secured in by nothing but cable and gravity. And I've still got all the Phillips in. So let's, uh, let's take those out one by one. Gosh, they're in well. Must have been me. So thankfully all these gold Phillips heads or goldish are all the same. So you got your switch, you got these two guys down the front holding in your shielding. Once you remove that, oh that's right, this board is actually, there we go, 
Well, to be honest, I probably don't need to remove that. Really? At all? This is one of the models that has the uh, removable cartridge slot. That's why I was uh, quite happy to receive this one. So it's a, an SNS CPU-GPM02. And the original that came out of it is the exact same model. So it looks like uh, Nintendo halfway through the GPM-02s went, you know what, why are we making this cartridge port removable? This isn't helping us. We didn't need to do this on the NES. Or the N Nintendo Entertainment System. As the cool kids say. So, that's not true. The screws are different. We've got these silver screws holding in this. They're a bit longer. So don't forget that. So you don't want to put them through one of the uh, other holes because then you'll end up with, well, more holes than screws. We remove that, it actually comes off. So that's cool but ultimately uh, not very useful. You can have a look and it's pretty exciting on the inside there. So there you have it. So the uh, original board was also a, a different uh, colour PCB, which was, well, exciting to a degree. So now you've got your green and you've got your, I uh, guess more an olive green on the replacement. You know, I would have preferred the original, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So we've got a few more screws to do. Slightly more in frame. Oh, too far. There we go. Okay, so now there are some, well, still another gold one on the main board. Corner over here. And a couple holding down the, well, the part that we need to remove. We get those out. Probably shouldn't have turned my soldering iron on so early. Okay, so four long and five short. Out it comes. Look at that. Now just be careful. Nintendo, I noticed on the Nintendo 64, they love these little, uh, little groundy clips, which I think are for attachments that you would screw in on the base. Of course, it's not secured in there because the screw sits on top of it. It's a good idea, actually. But yeah, they'd essentially ground uh, your Satella view or whatever you have slapped on the bottom there through the expansion port. And same with the Nintendo 64, you've got a uh, good old 64 DD. So, if we have a look here on the base of the board. Big screw, okay, easy. These screws here, these gold screws that uh, you can see, they, well, most of them. One, two, what's that fourth one do? One, two. Oh, it goes into the uh, RF out. Okay, so I want to remove that, because I believe that comes off the board. Or does it? No, it doesn't. Gosh, this will be interesting. I hope I don't break it. Maybe I should do it on the other board first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's let's do it on the other board first. The one that's allowed to be broken. So, same thing. One, two, three, four, five. But we've got quite a bit of solder up here on the um, DC in. So, normally I'd say use the desolder gun, but my desolder gun doesn't have a tip that's big enough. It also doesn't have a tip big enough to do a Nintendo 64. Uh, controller ports I found out unfortunately which made me a bit sad so that's greater than one millimeter I had a 0.8 and a one millimeter tip so what we need for this is uh, the good old desolder braid which I haven't used in a long time but it's good stuff I mean it's pretty cheap relatively cheap for you know 
seven meters. So that's, that's nice. So I'm just gonna wrap it a bit, fan it out a bit, chop this bit off. Where's my scissors? Don't want too much of it. It's dead, covered in solder from something else I was desoldering. What was it? I have no idea. And it just occurred to me I'm still recording at 24 frames a second. I should have bumped that back up to 50. Oh well. I'm sure I'll remember next time. So, grab your soldering iron. Now you gotta be careful not to, uh, well, to hold it. You burn the crap out of yourself because copper is there we go, we're focused on the completely wrong thing. Let's shuffle things around. There we go, that's a bit better. And focus. Focus your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Watch the magic of Dick. You see, now I'm holding it. This is obviously going to burn me. So we just want to heat it up as much as we can. Get as much of that solder out as possible. Really, I, I mean, you could also uh, wait for that crunchy noise. You could actually sort of reflow it a bit because the solder's probably quite old. And being on a DC import, it's never good. But if you reflow it, what it does is, is it will come up a bit easier. So add a bit of solder. These can absorb quite a bit of heat because they've got quite a bit of metal on the other side. So once you're happy, that's sort of nice and shiny again. Get your extremely hot desolder braid. Don't touch it. And just press it in and wiggle. With a bit of luck, it'll soak up all the solder. Of course, there's the other thing that may not do anything. But that has actually worked quite well. Which is good, because uh, the goal is to remove it. Obviously. You see there's quite a bit of solder coming off there. Hot. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, 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 oh. They just sort of press into it and wiggle. You start to hear that crunchy noise. Uh, yeah, that's probably clear then. Mostly clear. Wow, a lot of solder on that one. All right. What is my camera focusing on? Yeah, I thought so, camera. And a fourth time. Or third, whatever I'm up to. The desolder braid is quite a useful tool. I would recommend it to anyone who is ever needing to desolder anything. Absolutely. Okay, so that's mostly done. I can, you can cheat and you can use the soldering iron to actually heat it up as you remove it. So we'll probably do that as well. Just, uh, just because. So. Let's try removing some of these screws and see what happens. So I definitely need this uh, silver one out. Which looks like it secures on something. Oh, okay, so those ports... Oh, right, okay, so those ports stay there. It's just the... Uh, just the DC... Is it actually... A... How is that attached? Is it even attached? 
Yeah, it is. Okay. Well. Huh. It actually moved a bit when I heated it up. I wonder if it's just held in by... Um... It doesn't actually look like that the back... The back of it is a part of the actual port. It's just sitting inside the port. It should just slide out. We may need to loosen the um, loosen it a little bit. Actually, why am I experimenting on this one? This is the nice backing. I should, oh, I'm all back to front of that. So really, you probably could just get away with just. Uh, Pulling at this while heating the Let's see what happens. Nothing. I assume it is a part of the port. Let's try removing the port and see what happens. So I'm just applying some uh, downward pressure. And I got sick of doing that, so I started pushing it back again. <laughs> Good to know. Let's do solder break. Problem is the solder goes through, and I can't get it back. Mmm, burning plastic. I just melted a bit of the blooming thing, didn't I? Hot. So, let's have a look, see if it moves freely. I've definitely gotten all the solder off the back one, so it's just this front one now. Come on, solder, up you come. Love this taco. Hmm, it's definitely moving. It does look to be attached. Okay. It's all good. All right. So now, speed up the legs a little bit. how that's meant to fall through while being attached. Why did they do this at the... Well, there we go, it just comes out. Uh, 
And the most stupid design for a DC jack goes to Nintendo. Congratulations, Nintendo. That is stupid. It is stupid and I hate you. Regards, McRetro. Actually lifted a bit of the pad on the other side of the thing that I couldn't see, so that's no good. Thankfully there's still plenty of pad and it's in the right direction of the uh, circuit. So it looks like these can be removed, but it's difficult. I'm still wondering, I'm still wondering why on earth that's even like that. I mean, what, what were they thinking? That's just a terrible idea. But, you know, it's their console, so it's fine. Can this actually come out at all? If I... Whoa, easy does it. I just poke at the DC in the middle bit. No. How, how is that attached? How have they attached it? Incredible. What a terrible design. Okay, so, once you've done that, if you dare to, I, in hindsight I probably wouldn't bother, but I was curious as to uh, whether that came off or not, and it does, with difficulty. So get rid of your old board, and you get a new fuse for that one, actually a uh, 1.5 amp. It's got a 2.5 in there, not a good idea. And this one will be much the same. Oh man, the same thing again. So, silver screw comes out. And then we add a bit of solder. That's a nice thick bit. We'll use these really short ones. Hmm, this is leaded solder. I should probably ventilate this room. Otherwise I'm going to be a heavy metal machine. I had trout for dinner last night. Not as good as salmon, in my opinion. Plus it has twice as much mercury. Huh. Tends to be methyl mercury as well, which we all know is not very good for you or the environment. Explains why fish are so dumb. All right, it's much the same on this one. Unless the plastic thing just comes off on this one. No, I didn't think so. I mean, I haven't actually tried to clean this. So I mean, it could just be. Dirty. Uh, let me just test that theory first. Paper towel. Some, uh, what do we got? Spray and wipe. Ooh, apple and citrus. Make sure it's not too damp. No, uh, it's not cleaning off. Or is it? It is not. Yep. It smells nice though. So I've got that. That's a good thing. And now we just repeat the process again. Woo! I 
it goes a little smoother on this board, that would be nice. I don't expect miracles. Ah! And you probably should also leave a little bit of cooling time just so you don't melt the uh, socket. That would be a very bad thing to do. Seriously, anyone considering getting a Hacko uh, FX888 or 888D, I highly recommend it. In fact, I've actually grown quite used to the uh, 888D, given that before I was just using a 25 watt or 20 watt iron. Definitely a move in the right direction. Whether it be a step, a leap, I don't know. Ow. Also, be careful of the spiky things on this board. There's like capacitors and stuff, and pins. Mm -mm. I love the smell of solder at 8 a.m. So, how are we going? How are we tracking that? Oh, I got most of it. Just a little bit more. And I can try reefing it off and hopefully not damage the... Uh, actually, it doesn't matter so much if I damage the socket on this one. It does matter whether I damage the socket on the other one. Which I'm hoping I didn't. So another way to use desolderate is to sort of place it over, completely over, the pin you're trying to desolder. I actually forgot that I used to do this. And then just heating both sides of it. And if you're really lucky, you'll get a bunch of salt. And I did. I've got to say, desolder gun trumps the, um, the solder braid, but desolder braid trumps the solder sucker. I am terrible with those things. I'm so bad, I can't even get any solder to come up, so I, I don't know how to use them. That's probably more the problem. I should watch some uh, YouTube videos on how to use a desolder pump. No, not looking too bad there. Let's... Uh Set it free. Something better than the other one, dude. Ah, really hot in that corner. It's really hot. And as you can see, there's a lot less solder there than there was. Than there was. It's too early for grammar. I did. Now it seems to be through now. I can actually see it on the other side. Close up of that on the uh, left hand side there. So you can actually see the legs going straight up and into the thing. So that one's loose. That one's free as well. So now slide toward the back without scraping the PCB too much like I just did. Whoops.
That one came off a lot better than the other one. No damage to the circuit. So, you know, it's it's all about... Oh, wow, I get, to get, I get to remove dust that would just have sat there for years. Mmm. 90s dust. So I'll just compare the two. They look pretty similar. This one looks a bit more out of shape. I'm sure once it's back on the board it'll be okay, right? Right? Apparently my camera has a... Uh, file size limit. <laughs> I guess I've been rambling on for half an hour. So there we have it. There's the two things. Hmm. Damn, the older one actually has a better looking uh, DC in socket. That's fine. I don't mind. Let's pop that one aside. Oh, maybe I'll sell it. Maybe someone else can use it. Who knows? It's spray painted. Yeah, that'd be fun. So, to reattach, it's simply reverse. Just pop it back in without melting anything. There's my uh, brush. Whoa! I lost my camera there. That would have been fun. $1,200 later. Why on earth are you using a DSLR? That's a good question. I could be using an iPhone. dust around the back port. Looks good. Move any golden locks that you've left behind if you happen to have blonde hair. Try not to let the switch land on the microchips. That's probably not a good thing. It's actually quite a clean board, so... And we just need to, uh... Pop it in, making sure the RF is a bit higher, lower. Take it, take it. All right, so immediately that gets in the way. Uh -huh. Okay, switch. You're out of here. It's just going to get in the way. You can sit in the timeout box. So two grey bits need to go into the RF composite, uh, composite RF box. It's certainly a challenge to do because these things also need to go up on the board. Since I don't really use RF, I guess I can just sort of wedge it up a little bit. Actually, it has a screw. Does it completely? It can't completely come off the board. It's got four solder points. So, right there. probably ties into some wacky Japanese channel anyway. Remember the Famicom? Boy, did I have trouble getting one of those going on the RF. That's why I had to do the composite, composite mod. difficult to get back in than it is to, uh, oh, give me a few moments. And so I'll just bend the RF thing almost off the board, that's cool. Who cares about RF in this day and age? I'm a retro gamer, not a... In fact, TVs don't even have RF anymore. I'd say that's a bit sad, but honestly, I don't care. Sorry, Pong. <laughs> Alright, so that's back in. Let's make sure it's screwed this back in. Nice and tight. There we go. Good as new. Thereabouts. So bent. You're doing to me RF port. Let's pop the silver screw back in.
and then re-solder up the uh, the DCN. So to do that, all we need is uh, well some solder, which thankfully is not in short supply. Plenty of it because. Uh, Ports love to go crazy. Snap off. Which is probably not so much of this design, <laughs> given that it's terrible, but probably good. Imagine Nintendo didn't have too many problems with uh, their ports. Unless they were abused, such as liquid damage. So shut down your hacko, have a look at your work. Say it's good enough and move on with your life. So that needs to go back into the icon. There we go, nice and out of focus and out of frame. <laughs> Wow, I must have sucked as a kid at jigsaw puzzles. Wow. This is red on here. Yeah. I guess that's one way to clean the uh, cartridge. Port is to remove it. Maybe that's what they had in mind. Who knows? I honestly don't think Nintendo would have. Hmm, it's reversible. There we go, have a look at that. That's much more uniform looking. So let's just uh, cut to an, well, I guess an ad break. Cut to an ad break and uh, see you back in a moment with the test. Go figure, as soon as I start recording it all goes out of focus. Anyway, right there, those balls of dust and a bit of hair that looks to be black, so not mine, uh, has come out of that cartridge slot. So, okay, the connectors on the actual board there, they're not where the cartridge connects, it's just literally this connector, which I've got to say, alright Nintendo, you win. You've done a magnificent job there, because you can remove it Go hold it up in the sun and use an iPhone SIM eject tray uh, removal tool, iPhone SIM tray removal tool to scrape away all the dust inside the cartridge slot. Now, I was, it wasn't reading my uh, SD2 snares or chrono trigger. I mean, it read chrono trigger once. I thought, that's not enough. And sure enough, bada bing, bada boom. There was just a lot of dust. So that's pretty nasty. <clears throat> I'm gonna go feed it to na neighbor's cat. Yeah. And, yeah, that'll be all right. And we'll cut back to, uh, to me actually doing something on the uh, little PVM. Okay, so there's the uh, PVM switched on, ready to go. And we'll start with Chrono Trigger, because it actually does something. Don't have a controller connected, so that first time. Didn't need to blow in the card or anything, it just works. So that is pretty good. It's black and white because this TV doesn't like something about the Famicom input. And uh, probably because it's uh, Japanese racist television. Alright, so let's pop in the uh, other game. 
There's a bit of flickering on the screen there. I also uh, this this SNES works perfectly on uh, on everything. So everything else, a good old Samsung included. And as you can see there, it's uh, is that the menu screen. I've, I've never actually really used the SD2 SNES yet. Reseat it. Ah, that looks a bit better. Okay, needed to reseat that. Just see that. I thought it might have had something cool and hip and graffiti like at the top. So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a long one, but we got there in the end. And now I've just got to uh, do all my other projects. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and drop me a comment. Love reading them. Catch ya.